Hey everybody! <laughs> yes, it must be Friday. It's at noon. And we're not here. <laughs> we pre-recorded this segment to say we're on vacation again. One week, and then we're going to be back the following week. What Chris and Derek and Minnie have prepared and Brent is a an series of the best of episodes, episodes 10 <laughs> through 18. So I'm going to introduce the people who are behind the scenes. This is Derek. We call him Big D. This is Minnie Gleb. We call her Min Min. She works the whiteboard. Over here is Chris Seibert, our executive producer. We call him Chris Seibert. Okay. <laughs> now, there's another guy who's a key link uh, on our team. His name is Brent Shively. You might have seen some of the videos on the YouTube channel that we're on. It's uh, the build series with Brent. Uh, he couldn't make it today, so we just want to make sure that he is included in this video because he's a vital part of our team. All right, Minnie, did you want to say something? I bring the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and Minnie is the heart and ambassador of our company, and we can't do anything without her because she brings the energy. All right, everybody, I just want to let you know we'll be back in a week. We love you. We're planning the autumn series for Fest 2 Live, and uh, it's going to be one heck of the rest of the year. So we'll see you next week. Don't forget to hit that notification button so you yes. can subscribe. <laughs> Woo! Who loves you, baby? Who loves you, baby? <laughs> I'm gonna swing over here, behind here, because I have some stuff set up. Because I'm gonna do a basic training as I would do for any of you coming into the training center. Okay, when we look at it, okay, it is a drill. <laughs> okay, but what I wanna go over is I wanna go over our clutch, our electronic clutch here and our settings. I wanna go over the speed range. I wanna go over to the clutch override, whether drill or screw mode, okay? And I want to talk about a few things like the batteries and the charges and whatever. But one of the questions I've been getting a lot about is, yes, this is a fixed chuck. Okay? It's all steel. You'll see knurling here. Okay? Also, it's not, well, you can removable, remove it if it's in repair, but it will not work with any of our other accessory chucks for the T18. Okay? Not the T18EZ. Hopefully you're following me on, us on this, but it's the exact same motor, okay? It's just we put a fixed chuck on there. Here's why I call it the big easy. It's easy on your wallet, okay? It's got a killer price tag, okay? So check out the prices online, but here's the thing I'm getting from a lot of people. What's the range for the chuck? Yes, everybody will say, hey, it's a half-inch chuck. But here's what's really cool about it. This will go down, and Chris, hopefully we can focus in on it. It'll go down to a 16th uh, bit, okay? But one of the questions we're getting is, is there bit slippage? And that's why Central Tech on our other drills really works, because there's no bit slippage. But check this out. I'm gonna, you know how you put a bit in here and you tighten it up, right? Okay, let me get that in there, because you've got to really dial this in. I'm going to slide it in there, take my time, just open it up a little. But I want to show you a wicked cool feature on here. Okay, so I have that in there, right? And look, there's no run out. Okay, now check this out. You see how the knurling's here, and it's smooth here. Okay, and you're going to see how they're both running in conjunction to, with each other. Okay, if I want to hold it up here, I can for a little bit of balance because that slips. But here's what I want you to hear, and hopefully this, this video captures this, okay? Listen. See how it just moved a little and that stayed stationary? Okay, I put it into lock. And then I'm going to take this and listen. Hear that? I'm biting down on the bit. So I can now drill with this, okay, and I won't have any bit slippage. This has so much power, I can keep going and going and going with this. Okay. And what I'm trying to show you on this, okay, yes, it's got a huge amount of torque, but you notice how the bit's not slipping in the chuck, okay, because I've bitten down on it, okay? Hey, Mo! And I'm almost through. 
Okay, so there's another reason it beeps, okay? One, okay, is if I'm running too low on the battery, it'll beep. That's the, that's the second reason. And the third reason is I've overheated, okay? So it's a protection feature for it. So it beeps three different times. Hopefully you followed that. Where this is our 5.2. Okay, and you know the power if you've had a Festool cordless before, but look at this 4.0, okay? Yes, amp hour, let's talk amp hour. Amp hour means the higher the number, and we, this isn't every publication, it's all online. The higher the number, the more amp hour is the gasoline in the tank. So of course this has more gas, right, than this one. Okay, now what we've done is we've uh, rearranged and uh, used a special cell inside where if we look at this, it's 50% lower, 30% lighter. I think I have my statistics right on that. Um, but you know what? It's the same power. So that's where you look at things sometimes and you're holding a drill out on the job site for a long period of time. You want to make it lighter in weight. And that's why we're going with this high power. Now, <coughs> I've talked about this high power battery a few times. Um, it's difficult to describe until you use it, but I will equate it to this. You ever use a garden hose? Okay, you, you're watering the garden or whatever, uh, washing the car, and guess what? It gets pinched, right? That's what happens with, <laughs> with a regular lithium-ion battery. But what we did is make it high power, we've opened it up. And you know how it gushes out afterwards? That's the best way I have to describe the difference between this battery and this battery. We've opened up the, the valve. When we look at domino connectors, what are they? They're knockdown fasteners. You'll see KD, that stands for knockdown. And what it is, is you want to either build something really big, okay, and you gotta get it up a couple flights of stairs, so you have to reassemble it on the job site, or you wanna ship it flat. I always get a kick out of when I talk about connectors. Someone say, just like Ikea. Yeah, just like Ikea. You assemble it there. But the other thing I want to show you about our connectors is you could put everything together, look at it, and what's the best way to finish? What's the best way to spray your lacquer or polyurethane? Is to finish flat. And with our system, you can disassemble it effortlessly and not get anything gummed up with your finish. And then you can put it all back together and get your kitchen installed or your bookcase installed or whatever installed. Can I buy all the pieces individually? Absolutely. What I'll always suggest though is you buy this kit because you can experiment with a few of the connectors. There's only four of them. Okay, and then what you can do <clears throat> is say, hey, I need to refill that kit because I'm going to do only right angle connections. I'm not going to do through connections. So here's the connections. There's four of them. Follow me on this. And really, there's only two. There's two for the center panel, and there's two for right angles. Okay, so the one we're going to be doing today, and I'm actually going to step through the process, is it has... A, and I'll describe these. These are like a wedge anchor. We're going to use an 8 millimeter cutter, and it's going to put this. Look, I'm going to connect this top to this side at a right angle. Okay, we have these posts, and we have the, the conical um, uh, grub screw, and we also have what we call a cross anchor. Okay, now there's another way to do it. I don't need an 8 millimeter cutter. What if I have existing, look, 32 millimeter system holes. We have, instead of using this post with the wedge anchor, we can go right into them with this post. I'll pull one out so you can see it. Okay, see how it's a, a coarse thread? And this is the other way to put a shelf or a separator in here. We have time, I'll show you that. And utilizing these um, cross anchors, you'll be able to put another right angle together. Now, let's look at this cabinet. These, these are not two cabinets. This is a single cabinet with a single center panel. So when I look at this, I need to connect these. I don't want to go through, and I'm going to do this connection point. I'll step you through that today. I have that set up, where I want to do a through mortars here, 
with an eight millimeter cutter. And then I'm going to put this in. So I have two of these cross anchors embedded here. So it's for a through mortise. Now, if and that's, that's anchor number three. Number four is another um, system. And if we look, it's the threaded post here. And you're going to notice here where I thread the post into this part here. So what if I have a center panel, and everybody who's built uh, kitchens like this or frameless cabinets like this, you don't go in this way and this way. You do it completely through. I can utilize that through hole. Check this out. I'm going to slide that in here like this. And instead of an 8 millimeter uh, mortise that I use with a domino, I can use that through hole. And I can create, and I can actually take this shelf and move it up here now if I want. Now, what goes in there are these two pieces right here. Okay? These are what the post sits in. And I'm going to build this. You can see it right here. As I twist this, this threaded post, these little anchors wedge out. They go into this nut, so it is virtually impossible to take out. So what I tell everybody is put it in there like that. Use a, a hammer like this. Okay. Make sure it's at least flush. Okay. So <clears throat> if you look at the end of the post, and I tell everybody this when I talk about the Domino 500 connectors, everybody knows Festool's a system. For me, this whole Domino connectors is a, the best system we have within our system. It is so well thought out. If we look at the very end here, See how that's three millimeter? We include this. This is a th uh, three millimeter ball hex. You'll see where it goes right in the end. Okay, so when I first got shown, I, I was sh shown these, I was like, that's cool, but you know what? This looks quite familiar. And why do we have flats on there? So think about this. Say you're building a kitchen and you want to knock it down, you build it in Florida, you want to ship it to New York. Okay? And you want to disassemble everything. You've got hundreds of these things in there, right? And if I'm constantly doing this, that's going to be a pain. Check this out. These are a perfect across the flat. They fit right in there. So when I put this in, I always make sure I have my clutch on, okay? So I don't, so I don't break it. And what's really important on this, see how that's set all the way in? You're going to see this little, see it? It's a little tapered. And you'll see where, uh, let, me, let me get a better shot. You want those turned in, okay? And the reason is this, and Chris, I hope we can get a good shot of it. Look at this little hex screw. See it? See how it's conical here? In the measurements we've given you, 15, which is easy. This is an easy one, okay? But the next one's 28. And the reason we give you 28 it's to, to put in the cross anchor, because this little screw fits in this cross anchor, okay? You'll notice it. It's, it, it draws it together. It's like a draw board. If you've ever done a mortise and tenon, like a breadboard edge, you always offset that. That little, um, you go in with your um, uh, through punch, and you punch it out, and then you offset it, so when you knock your pin through there, it draws it together. Same thing with this, okay? Look, this, when we set it in at that 28, this finds its equilibrium at the bottom. So you're going to see it pull together. It's built in there. It's really sweet. Come on in, everybody. Make sure those tapers are, fall, are in so these, can, these screws can hit it. And I'm going to take that, put it together. Okay. Now, Chris, I'm going to turn this around like this. And maybe you can come in here so you, everybody can see how those just pull right in. And I can get that. Look, look, that's what you want. On a frameless cabinet, you want that edge band to be perfectly flush and really stout. And over here, look at this. Look at this. Look how per that's a perfect butt joint for a cabinet. Okay? Okay, so here's our track. And you're going to see you have two ribs on here. And they're for clamping. Okay, this is where the TSR rides. Good. Now, here is, and when you get a... Uh, HK55, it comes with the FSK250. But look at this. This is completely different. So one of the top questions is, hey, I got a TS55. Will it work on the FSK track? Absolutely not. But I have an HK55. Will it work on this track? 
the uh, regular FS track. It will. And I'll show you that in just a little while. Is basically this is always having one of these attached to the saw. Because the way you cut normally with a regular seven and a quarter, and you're going to notice this is the same size blade as the 55. Okay, it's a 55 inch blade. Uh, I mean, a 55 inch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a six and a quarter blade. Um, it's not your typical seven inch, seven and a quarter blade. Okay. <clears throat> you know how you make a mark like this? Okay. When you're cutting something and you take it and you take your saw and your lineup, if you use your HK saw without the track, you see where it says zero? I can bring this right over to zero and make the cut. Even if I use in a Swanson square. Or speed square. I always still call them Swanson squares. Okay. If I my lineup is at 45, it's right here. Okay. What I like to teach people is when I'm using it off the rail. Okay. Instead of going like this to look at my mark, Chris, let's see if you can get over here. Right here is a viewing window, so I can actually take that and bring my blade right up to there, and I can actually see where I'm going to cut and do my alignment. That's if you're using it off the rail. Okay. Sometimes I use that viewing window or that sight window when I'm using it with a rail. You'll see in a few minutes. Okay. So there you go. Now the other thing too, really quick about the saw, you're gonna notice a couple of things on here. Uh, there's no like tab here to move the guide out of the way. Check this out. Nice and safe. It's right here to move it out of the way. Now you're also gonna notice this, and this is good. This will be a lead-in for me to talk about the blades. Okay, you see this right here? That is the same thing or does the same thing as the TS55 does right here. Check it out. Okay, that is called a riving knife. Okay, and what that does is that keeps the kerf open when you're cutting case hardened wood. Okay, same thing with this. If I'm ripping with this, this will prevent the blade getting pinched with case hardened wood. And let's look at the number there. So hopefully we can get the light on there. It's 1.8 millimeters thick. No, see how that's bumping up against there? And I can rotate my other fixed, my variable point in there. So when I make a cut, and I always, I always try to hold the rail. You see how that retracts? So what if I want to do a 15 degree cut? I'm going to take it like this. I'm going to loosen that green part. I'm going to bring it right here to 15 degrees. Pretty simple. And I'm just going to take that. Now, look, there's my fix. My buddy Gil has that highlighted in red because it really stands out. And look, I'm just going to rotate it in and bring it right in. See that? OK, now, here's where we start to get really cool with this. <laughs> what if I want to do that compound angle? OK, see how I just swivel that like that? OK, I'm going to take this. I'm going to hit it at 15 degrees. Yes, everybody, I know the questions that's coming. <laughs> OK, watch. I take my fixed. I take my variable. And now I get compound angles just like this. Remember my increment. I need to start at 80. So this is where this comes in. So here comes the math at home. What's half of 32? Mini. Boy, is she good at math. OK. I am going to call you Miss Metric today. OK. OK. So check it out. You have some numbers on here. You have 16 and you have 32. OK. So very important. I'm going to use the 16 side. I always use, and this is the way I was taught, always use the 16 number. And when I first got taught this, I was like, what does he mean up and out? In other words, Chris, sneak in here. I'm going to set this. You see the 16? It's up facing me and out facing me. So I'm going to set this up just like this. I'm going to set it at the end of the rail so you can see it. OK, and I'm going to take this one and I'm going to flip it. So, oh, and, and I'm going to say, hey, listen, I didn't cut a balanced panel. This is why you have to have multiple dots if you have it like this. Look, space. But this is a balanced panel. So when I take this, that 16 up and out, I'm going to take it like this. I'm going to put it in. 
like this as I fumble with this. I just want to get my two marks there. There we go. And you'll see how, check this out. See how I cut this? Whoopsie, I went too far. Sorry, guys. Chris, you're supposed to correct me as I do this. <laughs> there, okay? Now, as I have it, check it out. Okay, Chris, come up here so we can, the, everybody can see this. See how it's wedged in there? So it doesn't matter if it's top or bottom. Okay, I'm going to set up one set of marks. So I'll flip it over so you can see it. You see how that 16 end stop is halfway in between? I'm going to set it like this, and I'm going to count three full holes. That's three. One, two, three. I'm going to make a mark here and a mark here. Look, one, two, three. I'll make a mark here and a mark here. Now, I could punch all of them. Say I'm making that, uh, that bar uh, cupboard for my uh, soda glasses. Okay, Or I can do this. Let me grab my tape. <coughs> what is half of 768? I know this because I've only done this a thousand times. But I also have a mark here. Check it out. It's 384. There's a diamond right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my rail here, center line. That's the center of my cabinet. And you've got to pick an even number. So look, I'm going to mark my holes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Capiche? So now you see it. See this rail? For all my upper cabinets in that kitchen, I'm already set. Now it's just clamping and unclamping. And I'm going to show you how to speed that up as well. I check my depth. Make sure the turret doesn't move. I'm going to check my marks, OK? And you see that right there? OK, that's my viewing window. That's why I marked the rail there. Now, also, Chris, while you're right here, see this right here? When I start to go to these, I just lift it up out of the hole. I let it find its equilibrium. I like to use my thumb, OK? So when I go over here, I make sure I let it, because th th that's how I used to skip, but that pin is riding right on in between. OK. Now, I'm going to take it. I'm going to get it started. I'm going to check everything. Here we go. I'm going to take it and lock it on with this little button. And you're going to see how quick I can knock these out. I'm not holding it here. I want perfect downward pressure. And before you move it, and my hand never leaves here, before you move it, you check to see if you nailed every one. And I'm just going to take, <laughs> take that and put it right there. OK? So it's going to get pretty cool here in a minute. And you'll see that's how I do the front. Got it? Good. <clears throat> see this? I leave this in the train center all the time. Somebody says, oh, yeah, it's a 2 by 6 Actually. It's two two by sixes. And this is what lives inside this. It's called a surface connector. And it's built with the cross anchors, the screw. The only thing that changes is the bolt and the measurements on how to set this up. I'm going to do this one with you as well today. Okay? But the best example that I've always seen for this is, and I want to cover a question. I'm going to set these two components down. Is this is a large countertop or a bar top? And it comes in this way, makes a right angle, goes this way. So I cut it on a 45. Okay? I don't put connectors all the way through. Chris, come in here. So hopefully we can see this. I'm going to open this up just a little. Okay, look, I got a domino here. Okay, I got a connector here, connector here, connector here. And what's in there is one of those surface anchors. So I'm going to put this together. I'm going to bring it together like this. Okay? And this is what I want to show you as I do this. Okay, and bring it together. Everybody wanted to know this. I'm going to separate this. I'm going to get my hex key that I like to use. I know it's over here somewhere. Oh, right here? Woohoo! Hiding. Okay. It comes with a four millimeter hex key, but I like using T's like this. This is four millimeter. So I tightened up these screws. And this is what I want to show you as I do this. The measurements I'll give you today. Okay, this acts like what we call in typical woodworking joinery, like a draw bore. Okay, when see the screw right here, it is sitting right here. So as I tighten it in, it finds its equilibrium because that's conical. Okay, so and look, check this out. I've already tightened that side. 
what I always wanted to know when I first saw this is how much does it draw together, and this makes a really tight joint. And you'll see as I start to close this joint up how it all pulls together. And these are wicked strong. Cool. Okay, so that's done. Now, got to remember how this is going in just like this. So this is where this goes in. And you're going to see, you're not going to see it, but when I take the bolt and put it in here and threads down, these spread out. Minnie, does that say Marvin Martin? Yeah. Hey, Marvin, how are you? When I knock that in, knock it flush. Okay? Let me show you. Right inside the lid here of the sustainer is a four millimeter hex. Okay? And you can take this and go like this. But what if I have a boatload of these? The distance across the flats is 10 millimeter. So what I do at home when I have a lot of these is, and this is a really great application. Uh, the other day I was talking about why the low speed. Well, I don't want to go really fast and shear that off. So what I'll do is I put a, let me just show you what I did. I have a, a hex adapter, quarter inch hex adapter. I put it right in here like this. And I can take this. Okay, and there you go. Now, what you have to do though is you see this little taper in here? That has to face to the back. So what I'll do is you have to bottom it out and then make sure that's facing back. Whew, we're almost done. So I'm going to take it like that. I am going to take, and it comes with the set, the uh, 25, uh, the 75 millimeter long 14s, okay? And I want to show you something. See how that can get tight? Okay. What I like to show everybody when they've come into training is never sand, because I hear this all the time, oh, I make a dry fit set of dominoes. Never sand this part of it. That's called the face of domino, because what you do is you, use little, you lose glue line if this is going to be a glue up. Right here, you'll see these little ribs. You can either take sandpaper, or what I like to do, because this is a, a knockdown, is I like to knock that rib off with a quick uh, block plane. Take it like this, and look how nice that sits in there still. See how it's all starting to line up? So what I'm going to do, just because I get a better eyeball on this, I'm going to back it this way so that, so that screw sits just right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, just like this. Okay, see, look, look. Look how that's nice and perfectly flush. And then I'm going to take my hex, and you're going to see how all of this just comes right together and pulls in wicked, wicked strong. Now... On this workbench, you see the length of this tenon? Okay, I wanted more glue line or more length in here, so I used these 100s. Okay, that's where on this one I went 25 and that one I went 50. These are 50 and 50 in depth. I just want to tell you that because you can, you can make this your system, but just remember to label everything. There's just, look how, look how tight this is, guys. Nice and super, super strong. The first way you buy this is you get the TID in a sustainer with no batteries and no charger because you might have an old 18-volt battery. Or guess what? An old 15-volt battery. That'll work on here as long as it's lithium-ion. Okay. The second way to get it is in a sustainer with two batteries and a charger. It's the TCL6 charger. It's a 40-minute charger, rapid charger. But if we look here, give me a cameraman so you can see this. It comes with the brand new pack. It's lighter in weight. I think it's 20% lighter or 50% lighter. I have that information, but it's a, it's a lighter weight battery. It's thinner. It's smaller. It's Bluetooth, Okay, but we call it high power. Okay, because this gives you the same power as the 5.2. Okay, really, really nice. So that's the second way to buy it. Now, worldwide, let me get my T lock sanitizer out of the way. Worldwide, we offer these combo kits. Okay, and bear with me, I'm not up to speed on what we're calling stuff, but the, the third way to buy it is this you get a TID with uh, two batteries and a charger. But we also include a PDC, our concrete hammer drill. Comes with a uh, 
Comes with a handle, depth stop rod, but it also comes with the right angle chuck for the hammer drill. Okay? The fourth way to get it is right here. It's a TID-18, two batteries, a charger. Okay? But it comes with the T-18 and a half inch chuck. Okay? It comes with two battery, uh, two battery, two belt clips. Okay? It, it comes with the fast fix stub like all our T-18 batteries. But then, excuse me, cameraman. You can also go and purchase the right angle. You have the ability for the right angle, the eccentric chuck, depth stop chuck, okay, and the central tech. Okay, that's the fourth way. The fifth way is now we're, in North, now we're building in North America. We have these combo kits. You can get the TID and make sure you check out the web on this stuff and at a local dealer, at all participating dealers, because what you'll see is we're going to put this out there, but you can buy it with a TSC, or, um, a TSC 55, <laughs> okay? <clears throat> okay, we're good? Okay, then you can also buy, and remember, when you look in, at this, we throw in extra gear. Like, you, you're going to get an extra blade with this, okay? You're also going to get, check this out, an extra sustainer one with it. Okay, for that extra gear. With the PSC and the TID, you're gonna get a this you're gonna get this pack of blades. Oh my god. And guess what? The sustainer one. There's two. There's a finish pack and there's a, a finisher pack, and there is a I think it's called the Pro Remodeler Pack. Now, let's start with the finisher pack. It's gonna come with a PSC, it's gonna come with a TSC, and it's gonna come with the combo kit TID. 18 and the T18. Okay. Also, check it out. A uh, jigsaw assortment pack, an extra 28 tooth blade, but a sustainer one, but it comes with another toolbox one. Okay. So there you go. There's a killer value. Now, this one I'm really pumped about because when we look at this one, this is the remodeler pack, everything you need to get going. TID, HKC, extra blade for that. It comes with, when I say TID, it comes with the PDC combo kit, okay? But it comes with the OSC 18 basic set, okay? And when I say that, it's coming with the OSC 18, our oscillating tool. It comes with two blades, actually three blades, a round blade. It comes with a depth stop depth stop uh, boot, all right? But it also comes with the plunge base for the OSC. You're going to get all kinds of batteries with the Pro Packs. You're going to get the charges. And we all box it all up, and it's quite the value. Oh, and the remodeler, once again, it comes with a Sustainer one, and it comes with the toolbox. We have a little celebration today. We just hit. 50,000 followers, subscribers on YouTube. So we want to yeah. woo! We want to say thank you. We hit it this morning. Uh, we really appreciate you guys tuning in on Friday for this live event. We're having the time of our lives. Uh, thanks once again. And don't forget, I'm all, Chris always tells me, make sure you hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. But once again, it's going to live on YouTube. Okay, so today's topic... Is gonna we're gonna have a little fun today because it's all gonna be application based because of our top, one of our top questions on our cordless Vectoro or the call numbers are the OSC 18. If I kind of know my board here that I'm cutting into some drywall, I don't know what's behind. And Chris, can we get in here? I put this pretend this is a water pipe. You don't know what's behind that wall, okay? Now if I did this. And I just took a blade and I put it in here like this. Let me grab the long blade and I'll just snap that in. Let me put this in. Okay. This is a recipe for disaster, everybody. Right? Because look, if I cut here, I would be cutting right into that pipe. Now, I got a question. How many of you have cut into a water pipe? I know I have. <laughs> okay. So what we want to do is we want to control the depth of cut. So just a quick punch through. And you're going to see the green part here. What if I just take this, and I always put the serrations here toward the green part. And you see that right there? Okay, you see that? Look, what I'll do is I'll grab a piece of drywall, 
and I'll take it like this. I'll go like this. Let's see if we can get this, Chris. And I'll take it like this. So I just plunge right through. I'll take a piece of material. Now my depth stop is set. I'll just set that there. And look, I can plunge up here like this. And I won't cut the pipe. See if we can get that, Chris. See that? It's a, it's a great feature for a precision depth stop. Now, what if I don't care about a depth stop? So I'm going to take the depth stop off. Okay, but I'm going to put another accessory on. Now, I'm going to take the battery off because I want to I want to do this. Now, I don't have to take the blade off, but I'm going to because I want to show you this. Look at the dust. See the dust in here? Okay. I'm just going to, Chris, watch the camera. I'm going to blow that away. Okay. See this tab? I'm going to pr press it again, and this is our dust extraction nozzle. Um, there's your, and this is great for overhead work, but it's also great for the side. I'm going to line up my arrows and slide it on. I'm going to put my shorty blade on there. Now, if I don't care about the depth stop, check this out. Oh, you know what I need? Dust yeah, there you go. I'm going to put this on. I'm going to hook up the dust extractor. All our, all our tips on our vac ends, I mean uh, tool ends, have an arrow there. I'm going to line it up with that arrow so it locks on. Okay, I'm going to take a battery and I'm going to put it on. Now, you're going to hear that I've coated this with our Bluetooth earlier. Okay, check this out. And I'm going to do this so you can see this, Chris, if we can get in here. Look at the dust extraction here. It's absolutely fantastic. And with that Bluetooth technology, see that? I'm getting a lion's share of that dust. See? And I got almost all of it right out there. So if I needed to do a through hole, okay? And I don't care about uh, depth setting. This is not an oil filter changing wrench. <laughs> it's the circle cutter, okay? And when you see this and how it works, this is the end all beat all. I've cut radiuses all day long with routers. I always go to a router where I'm cutting circles, but boy, this makes a jigsaw real handy for cutting circles and radiuses. Okay, and I'm gonna show you how. It's very effective. You'll see, you'll see, I promise. What to do is you just take the, say I'm doing an outside corner here, and you just take it like this, and you see that's my center point? Like I'm gonna do this radius right here. Look, take it just like this, and I'm gonna, actually I'll tighten it in a little so you guys can see this. I'll tighten it up, and look, I'm gonna start here, and I'll do this radius just like this. Cool? You can draw it out. If I need a slighter radius, I can bring it back. But what's cool about this is I'm going to make this, and I know that I'll be able to sand. Maybe, maybe I'll leave a little flat here, but I can sand that in with a hand sanding block or some kind of edge sanding attachment. We'll see. Okay, so I have that set. Let's get going. I got my blade in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go splinter-free with it. I'm going to hook this up. I got my Bluetooth battery right here, 4.0 amp hour. Let's hook this up. Let's get my 4 amp on there. Perfect. Okay, and let's set my splinter guide. And you know, on here, there's two little Vs right here. I'm just going to slide this in just like this, because look, on these splinter guides, there's little V grooves. Beautiful. Okay. And then when I set this, I always set it like this. My hands are away from it. And see how I cut that? Now I'll get splinter free. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring this right in. Get a, I'm going to set those little points in there ever so slightly. Okay, let me see if I'm in there. I'm almost in there. There I go. I'm going to start it up. Okay. Derek, how's the audio? Good? Okay. So I'm not going to scream into this. What I want to do is, this is a finesse tip I want to show you. I always hold it here. It works better if I turn on the dust extraction. Okay, when I'm getting to the end here, see how my hand's here, it's holding it flat. When I get to the end, 
I let that piece drop and I turn it off. And you'll see, and maybe I didn't get the center line, but I can sand that right in. And I have a great template to use. Let me just turn off my Bluetooth. I didn't cycle on my, my Bluetooth battery. Okay. So hopefully that explained a few finesse tips. And there you go. You have that. And, and think about it. Look, I got, a, I got a countertop. I can just take that. And what I like to teach everybody when I do this, okay, that's a template I'm making. I don't need the whole thing. I can cut it here. But never throw this stuff away, okay? Because this right here can also be maybe a layout, but you can also use this as a template for something someday, okay? I'm going to put this abba nut on just like this, okay? And I'm going to put my cutting disc on just like this. See how it nestles in there or nests in there? And I'm going to spin this abanade on like this. I'm going to put it just like this and lock it in, flip my tab. Now I'm going to put my Babri on. Okay, slides right in just like this, and I'm ready to cut. Oh, jeez, oh, jeez, oh, jeez, oh, jeez. What did you say? I can't hear you. Okay, here we go. See how easy that is? Now, if, if those sparks were hitting me, which they were, I can adjust that, watch, just like this. I just grab that tab and rotate it so it's in that advantageous position. Check that, wow! That's better than the fourth! Woohoo! Man, I don't know about you, I could do that all day long. <laughs> I'm gonna switch it, okay? Now, when you use a rotary hammer, okay, you don't have to put a little pressure. You put some and then back it out. Some and back it out. You let the machine do it yourself. Look at that, okay? Now, somebody asked me, after we did that post, what's the difference between a rotary hammer and, a, and the PDC, the BHC and PDC? That's our hammer drill. If you were choosing a drill for wood, concrete, and steel, I would probably point you in the direction of the PDC, okay? But a hammer drill, yes, it's a lot louder. It's a multi-use drill where if you're drilling strictly in concrete all day long, this is a lot faster and a, and a big, big call out for this is you'll see this part between here and here on the rotary hammer. Check this out. That is called vibration stop and that little buffer, if you're drilling into concrete all day long, will let you drill more holes, okay? Now, we've combined that with the dust extraction. I don't have to suck that hole out right now. I could just put my anchor right in there Normally, it's a two-step. You drill, and then you got to take some way of getting the dust out. This cleans the entire hole out as I do it. So I thought I'd cover that. Yes, I've covered it in other Festool Lives, but I thought I'd give you a few more tips and tricks on it. I'm gonna, just going to take a screw. This green part right here adjusts my nose, my nose tip for, and if you want to read it, you can set it right here. There's a scale for length of screw, okay, to set it up. It slides in here like this. You have this green tab like this. So I like, you push it, there's an arrow right here. Chris, hopefully we can get that. There's an arrow that pushes it forward. Okay, I'll feed it in like this. So I have it. And then you're gonna hear a click, but I wanna start it on that one. I'm gonna pull it out like this. Now, here's the beauty of our system versus a lot of systems out there. Okay, look, I can move it forward and back. In case I miss a screw, I can come back and get that one I missed. I'm going to now take this and adjust it to the height. Okay, that is a no my tip. So when I start shooting this, I'm gonna take it now, look, put it in auto, and we're gonna see how I can drop it in, watch. Okay, see that? That may be a little too deep, 
okay? I'm just starting to break the paper. I don't want to do that. So when I come over here, you have a line here. And I, I'm sorry, an arrow. Right here, there's a line. And you have this green dial. So if I'm, go and I watch my line. If I'm going this way, I'm going shallower. If I go this way, I'm going deeper. I'm going to set it one click over. Let's just see what happens when I put it right next to it. Okay, that's perfect. I got it dimpled. You could set it to however you want it. Okay, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget, next week, we're on summer vacation for just one week. Vegas. <laughs> Chris is heading to Las Vegas. All right, Big D, Minnie, Brent, thank you. Jason, thank you. And everybody, thank you very much for watching Festool Live, and happy Festool Friday.